the next 30 minutes could change your life. with Ron Carpenter. Well, it's that time again. I get to be with you for the next few minutes, and I just want to tell you what a pleasure it is to make this investment into your life. I'm Pastor Ron Carpenter. I want to welcome you to Redemption with Ron Carpenter. I believe there's something redeeming about everything in your life, even the worst days of your life. God can reach down in redeeming love and make something wonderful out of it. And I want to encourage you with that word today. You know what? This is a great time to be watching us by this telecast because I'm getting to preach a topic that every pastor would love to get his hands on. We're talking about favor. And you know, when you begin to talk about favor, you talk about something that you can't earn. You talk about God doing something just because he wants to do it. You're talking about an aspect of God's love that we don't understand because so many of our relationships are performance driven, performance oriented, as long as we do well, the relationship is strong, and when we don't do well, the relationship diminishes, but not with God. He can never love you any more than He already does. He can never love you any less than He already does because it's never been based on your performance. It's been based on Jesus' performance. And when you accept Him, you have God's favor. Have I got your attention yet? I hope I have. Why? Because I can't wait for you to hear these messages. Let's jump in there right now and see what God's Word has to say. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. So Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, please <coughs> let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him in whose sight I might find favor. And he said to her, go my daughter. Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened. She happened to her, it just happened. With God, nothing just happens. But in your life, there's going to be things and it looks like it just happened. So it happened that she came to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Now, behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered, the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this. So the servant who was in charge of the reapers said, it is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. Why didn't he just say her name's Ruth? If he has that much information on her, he knows her name. But the Moabites were idolatrous worshipers. So there's a little bit of ethnic tension going on right here as he is already trying to discredit Ruth before Boaz has a chance to meet her. Ooh, have you ever been misrepresented? Mm. <laughs> After he said... Please let me, after she said, please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued from morning till now, though she rested a little in the house. Boaz said to Ruth, listen, my daughter, will you not? Don't go to glean in any other field, nor go from here, but stay close by my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? When you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. She fell on her face, bowed down to the ground and said, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice since I am a foreigner? Lord, bless your word and help me to preach it in the time I got. And everybody said amen <laughs> and amen. Isaiah 55 on the screen, please. Isaiah 55. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Verse 11, so is my word 
that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty. Somebody needs to get happy. But it will accomplish what I, come on, keep reading me, what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you have ever had life take you through some painful experiences? <laughs> Naomi made this statement. She said, I went out full. I had my husband. I had my families. I had my daughters-in-law. I went out full, but everybody died, and I came back empty. She said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Mara means bitter. And we talked about how bitterness can keep you from receiving your blessing a few weeks ago. But the fact is, we now have two people left. We have Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi. They are together, and there is a common bond called pain. Pain is a, is a strange, strange partner because it can bring the oddest of people together. The thing about pain is pain is not racist. <laughs> it does not care what color you are. Pain has nothing to do with calendar age. It does not matter how old you are. Uh, pain does not matter how much money you have. It totally is not sexist. It's not racist. It has no uh, socioeconomical inclination. Pain will at some time or another touch everybody's life on some level, on some way. <clears throat> now, there are some people who've not experienced much of it yet, and there are other people who feel like they've had more of their share. But what we need to understand and what we need to appreciate is, is that, that pain is a bond. And you know something? I, I am a person that when I go through pain, I have to make sense of it. Mm, seven of you with me. I don't know. Maybe some of y'all just live with it. When I go through something and it hurt, when I go through loss, uh, when, when I feel violated, when I feel something has been taken from me, when, when something happened unexpectedly, when I sowed good seed and when I reaped a terrible harvest, I'm the kind of guy, I have a hard time just saying, so it be. I, I'm the kind of guy, I have to go to God and say, that surely there's got to be a reason. Come on, is anybody like that? I, I, I'm the kind of person, I will almost get stuck if God don't give me some type of greater purpose or greater good. In fact, I wrote a book that had to do with trying to find out why, why did I go through what I go through? Please tell me that a demon didn't get loose in my life and wreck it. Please, please tell me that God didn't forget about me for two or three years. Please tell me that God didn't take his hand off the steering wheel and let my life run amok for a little while. Please tell me that there is something on the other side of this pain that I have to look forward to and I came to you with good news generally in the Bible I can prove to you that after a season of pain God will come on the back of pain with a season of great favor so those of you that are hurting right now weeping endureth for a night but joy cometh in the morning he gives you beauty for ashes. He gives you dancing for your morning. Come on. He turns your sorrow into joy. Usually something very tough is then followed by something very wonderful. So those of you that are in a wonderful stage, you need to praise God. And those of you that are in a tough stage, you need to put a praise on credit knowing that your good day is about to come. I'm going to give you five seconds to put one on credit. If you're in a tough day and you need a good day, Take five seconds and bless him that you got something good to look forward to. Give us just a little time out right here and we'll be coming back to you. Ron Carpenter's series on marriage and dating gives you the tools to help you create prosperous relationships by categorizing them and placing boundaries on them. If I had an altar call for who's been hurt by a relationship, the whole building could come down here and cry a tear over something. But was it because they were so bad or was it because you let them into a category God never wanted them to be in in the first place? This series will give you a clear understanding of what the Bible says about marriage. My Bible tells me that I'm supposed to do for my wife and family what Christ did for me. 
The sanctifying influence in the house should not have to be mama, it should be daddy. Get on the road to strengthening the relationships in your life today by ordering your copy of I Do, I Did, available on CD or DVD for your gift of $30 or more. Call, write, or visit roncarpenter.com. Learn to effectively manage and thrive in all your relationships. Call now. And now, back to Redemption with Ron Carpenter. Paul said, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his sufferings. So the greatest writer of the New Testament said that there are two ways to relate to Jesus. There are two ways to relate to everybody in this building. Can I... If I can, if I can be honest with you, I, I'm weirded out by people who ain't never gone through nothing. Their optimism annoys me. Can I be honest enough to say that? Because you can tell by hearing them talk. Life has not hit them yet with their curveball. And their optimism can sometimes be overwhelming. And you can tell by the sound of their voice they are still naive as to what pain and what trauma feels like. Come on. And, and and, and I, you know, I, I don't want you to just be able to relate. I See, I need fellowship not just with my successes. I need fellowship with my sufferings. One of the most difficult times in my life was even more difficult because while I was suffering, I had no fellowship in my su I'm preaching to somebody right here. Hey, hey, see, I, Paul said, I want to know what Christ suffered and I want to know the power of what happened after he suffered. He said, I want to relate to him on both levels. And we have created a culture in America where we want to relate with you when you're on top of the world, but we don't want to have anything to do with you when you're suffering. And I was isolated in my suffering. Has anybody ever been isolated? Why? Because most people can't handle your suffering time. And I want to tell you, if you can only relate to my successes, you can't really relate to me because most of my successes were born out of my struggles. And if you want to relate to my success, you're going to have to also relate to my struggle because it is out of my pain that I slew a giant. It is out of my pain that I killed a devil. It is out of my pain that I scaled the mountain and went to the next level. It is out of my pain that God restored everything that I've lost. And if you want to know why God put me on a high place, you need to be able to relate to me when I was crawling through a low place. Shout hallelujah. Now, I want you to say this with me. Nothing just happens. Now think about what you just said. You just said nothing just happens. So the good things that happen, nothing just happens. The bad things that happen, your steps are ordered. The painful thing that happened, Please never say, nothing just happens. Nothing. Now, you've already said it. You've already made that. Nothing just happens. So if it's a good thing, if it was a painful thing, if it was a traumatic thing, if it was a thing I wish had never have happened, if it was a blessed thing, if it was a thing, I know that with God, nothing just happens. Because God's got my steps ordered. He has a predestined plan and he works all things out according to the counsel of his will. So what I have to comfort me is when I'm in a bad thing, it's still nothing just happens. When I'm in a tough thing, nothing just happens. And I realize that if it's tough, it's bad, it's dramatic, it's painful, or it's good, it all works in my favor, and God has it all a part of a strategic plan. Because nothing just happens. I come on over to the story <clears throat> and Boaz is not talking to her but he is talking about her. 
And favor moves you without you knowing that it's moving you. Because the thing about favor is favor is not going on in you. Favor is going on in somebody else on your behalf. <laughs> so we think because we can't feel anything, nothing's happening. But for you to have favor, it's not that something stirs in you. It's that something is stirring in the hand and in the heart and in the mind of the person God wants you to have favor with. So Ruth probably feels I'm alone in my suffering. But what she don't know is while Boaz is not speaking to her, Boaz is speaking about her. And some of you have no idea that words are moving your life right now and you don't even know it. Because you think that you had to hear the word for it to move you. You think you had to speak a word for it to move you. But what Boaz did was speak a word over her. Oh, God Almighty, hallelujah. And it started moving her. So God has gone to somebody else and started speaking words over your life. And those words are moving your life, although you feel like you're at a standstill. Am I doing okay so far? Somebody say, words move you, words move you. So her life is beginning to move from the background to the forefront, although she feels alone in her suffering, no one to fellowship with her pain, and nobody speaking to her about moving forward. Have you ever felt like you were the one that never got the prophecy? Have you ever felt like you were the one that nobody ever saw? It's because God does not have to let you know when favor is happening in your life. He has to let somebody else know. And then in a moment, when you're at the right place, hey, at the right time and you come up on the right person, bam, something that you couldn't make happen for years happens in a moment. Somebody shout favor. I'm trying to preach this thing. Boaz is speaking about her and the Bible says that whenever God speaks a word that he watches over it to perform it. It cannot return back to him until it has performed the purpose for which he sent it out for. So in other words, there's never a word that goes out that does not have purpose attached to it. So whenever God speaks a word over you, even though you didn't hear the word, even though you didn't speak the word yourself, it was a word that God spoke over your life. You have to understand that God has to watch over that word to make sure that it performs everything that it was sent forth to do. There was another place where the psalmist said he watches over his word very closely. God's not watching you from a distance. He's right over your head following you down that path. Why? Because that word that he's spoken over you, he's making sure that it's hooking you up. He's making sure that you're going to show up when you're supposed to show up. What looked like a coincidence wasn't a coincidence. It was a plan. He's making sure you end up at the right place. He's making sure when a fork's in the road, you take the right turn. Hallelujah. you got to understand God has been at work moving you with word. When God speaks a word over you, you, it has to happen. You must understand it can't come back to God till it's happened. So whatever God has spoken over your life, your present condition is not indicative of your future purpose. Quit looking at Ruth begging in the field. You are the Ruth that's going to be married to Boaz and God is going to work everything out to move you from a beggar to a owner. God's got everything in the middle taken care of. Church, three people say, stop worrying. Stop worrying. Boaz doesn't always show up looking like Boaz. <laughs> Let me tell you something about God. Here again, I, I taught you two weeks ago, generally, if something is, a, is indeed a truth, it's consistent all the way through the word of God. And God consistently hides great things behind things that look very common. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah. I 
feel like I'm in that crowd. Do you feel like you're in that crowd? I feel like sometimes God just tucks us away in obscure places and nobody has that much deal how much water is in that rock. To everybody else, it just looked like a rock, but Moses hit it one time and water flow out of that thing and it began to feed a whole nation. Sometimes a blessing don't look... Sometimes when you pray for a deliverer and you're waiting on God and Moses shows up. They say, we, we got Pharaoh. We don't need Moses. We need God. We don't need an old 80-year-old man who's been running for his life for 40 years because he murdered somebody. We need God. Blessings don't always show up like a blessing. And you need to understand that you need to be aware because when the moment of favor comes, it's not learned, it's recognized. You just know it. You can't go take a class on, okay, this is your moment of favor. Now let me tell you number one. You know it's your time. And something inside of you explodes and says, this is my moment. When favor comes, you have to deal with favor haters. <laughs> Do you know nobody ever talked about me when I had 11 members? Do you know I had no enemies whatsoever when I was renting a little warehouse on the other side of town back up in the woods with a $200 wooden sign out in front of it? I had no enemies. But when the blessing of God <clears throat> breaks forth, it's not the world that turns on me. It's the people in the same field. These are the people that are picking up grain with you. And so Boaz comes and says, who is this lady? Now, if they know who her mother-in-law is, if they know the town she was raised in, if they have information concerning her past and that she was an idol worshiper, he knows her name. <laughs> but when the time of blessing came, she was misrepresented. And she was not told the name. Her name, Ruth, means something worth seeing. But instead of being told this lady is something you need to see, she was called the Moabitess. Let me tell you where she came from. <laughs> Beware of the people that want to ruin your future blessings by constantly referring to your past. <laughs> I've got to have a friend that sees Ruth, not Moab. I've got to have a friend that says, I see what you can be, not what you have done. Come on. i got to have a friend that when I'm in a place where I'm stuck and I'm acting a little crazy, they'll stick their finger in my face and say, this ain't you. I know who you are and this is where you're going and I need some people to help me, not remind me of my past, but shake myself loose from everything that's of my past. And if all you can do is remind people of where I've been from, I got the gift of goodbye because I need some people to come on in who say, that is in my past but a new season is about to dawn. Boaz wasn't in my past. That's why I was so jacked up. But wait till you see who I'm about to meet and wait till you see where we're going together. And if you're moving forward with Boaz, give God a 10 second praise. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you're wondering what these messages are called on favor, I'm calling it Dream On because I believe people need to dream again. Why? Because God can take you to a place. You might not be able to get there by yourself. You may be talented, may be educated, may have a lot going for you, 
but there are doors that the blessing of God open up for you that you could never open up for yourself. I hope these messages are being a real blessing to your life. I hope they're challenging you to believe God on a greater level. You know what? There's another part of the Ruth series that I want to take and put in a group of people's hands that are very special to me. I want to thank all of our friends and partners who support this ministry on a monthly basis. And while all of our product is available for purchase on our online bookstore, there's some that I just want to put a gift into your hand. If you'd like to become a partner with this ministry, God's touched your heart. Maybe we've been a blessing to you and you say, you know what, I want to reciprocate the blessing. I want to be a blessing back. We would welcome that. And for your first month's gift of any size or more, I'm going to take this won't go back. There are many things the enemy uses to try to get you to go back on your commitment to Christ. We want to expose them, talk about them, talk about how to overcome them. That's what I talk about in these messages. And for your first month's gift of any size, this is my gift back to you. And it just simply says this, thank you for being a part of this family. You know, there's some things you just can't get enough of, and one of the things I just can't buy enough of is TV time with you. But I have other means of connecting with you. With Facebook, Twitter, social media, YouTube, podcasts, we got a lot going on. And I would invite you to use these vehicles. Some of you say, well, you know, I'm not technologically advanced, or I don't know a lot about a computer. I didn't know a lot about, but you know what? I used to think if I hit the wrong button, I was going to blow the world up. But you know what? I've hit the wrong button a few times, and the world didn't blow up. And uh, so don't be afraid maybe to engage some of the means that God is using to reach a new generation. And I want to be able to talk to you on an ongoing basis. And through those means of media, I speak to you maybe sometimes five, six, seven times a day. So connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. I would love to be able to talk to you. Right here in uh, Juanita in Plymouth, in Plymouth, Massachusetts, she said, great message today. I wish I lived in your area. You know what? I wish you lived in my area too. But we have iChurch, and there are a lot of people that are never going to live in this area but still want to enjoy what God's doing here. I thank you that you enjoyed this. I thank you that you let us be a part of your life, but you always have that internet streaming, and we're going to do everything we can to make it better and better, to make that experience more and more of a God experience, a real experience for you. And thank you for being a part of our iChurch community. And somebody right here locally, Pamela Shaw, said, I love who I'm following because I can pick up what he drops. Thank you, Jesus. She's been watching this uh, Ruth series. You know why? Because Boaz told those that were working in his field, you leave some food on purpose. Drop it on purpose. I think I made the statement, if I remember correctly, in one of my messages, you can't pick up anything if the people you're following is not dropping anything. Who are you following? What are they dropping in your life? I hope that we are dropping things that you can pick up and use in your life. And it has been wonderful sharing this time with you. We'd love to hear from you, all right? And until next time, may God richly bless you, everything and everyone connected to you.